Hey hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I thought we'd have a little bit of a discussion video really about Warlord Games' recent announcement. Not for Black Powder because that would require them having an announcement about Black Powder. But uh, it's about their recent announcement to do with Bolt Action. And also I've been thinking this week about the sort of fandoms and the the kind of the kind of people who identify with various companies and games so i'm 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 sort of talking around the subject here i don't really know why but anyone who follows games workshop we may be aware that there has been something of a disturbance in the force this week with the announcement that there are female space marines well not technically space marines Technically, they are female Adeptus Custodes, but that has caused rather large ripples throughout the 40k community. Now, some of you may know from my April Fool's post that I do play Warhammer 30,000. I have my beautiful Dark Angels. I love the Dark Angels. And I have a Sons of Horus army. And I've actually just bought a uh, Custodes army as well. But uh, So I do keep up with the Games Workshop. Not so much 40k, but 30k in particular. So I've been following the debate and doing my <laughs> usual trolling. And uh, very much enjoying it. But it's, it's just made me think this week about, uh, about sort of the... Not the meta of games as in the meta around, you know, gameplay and things like that. But the meta of the actual creation of the games themselves that's, that's what it's made me think about so what i thought we'd discuss today is with the third action uh, third edition i should say of bolt action being announced do we require a third edition of black powder it's been quite a few years since the second edition came out so do we need a third edition of our black powder game especially in light of some of the new rules and this is what's making me sort of contemplate this idea as well we've recently seen the release of general de arme 2 that seems to be doing very well and in the not too distant past we had rules like soldiers of napoleon valor and fortitude and what's the other one i'm trying to think of now uh, La Salle 2, as well. I'm going to forget La Salle, and uh, La Salle 2 from Sam Mustafa as well. So we've had in the last two or three years a load of new rule sets. So what I thought we'd have a quick discussion of is, do we need a new edition of Black Powder? What's unique about Black Powder? Why, why do I still play Black Powder in spite of these new games? Do we need a new edition? And what's the sort of, you know, the, the general tenor of the audience for this game, I guess? So it's going to be a little bit of... It's, this one's not one of my tightly scripted ones. It's going to be slightly meandering. Uh, I'm really interested in your opinions in this. This is really just designed to try and get people thinking about it and talking about the subject. So really what I've got to say I don't view as being that important. I'm far more interested in what you guys have to say in the comments on this one. Let's start off with the main question that's presaging us today. Does Black Powder require a second edition? Well, this the second edition, uh, a third edition, sorry. Well, the second edition came out on the 6th of October 2018, so just under six years ago now. Now, for the, if we're going to take a Games Workshop level of um, edition refresh, that's half as long again as they were traditionally, twice as long as their editions are now. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not holding up Game Workshop as the gold standard of uh, new editions, uh, certainly not. But what I am saying is there are companies out there that would refresh their main rule set every three years. So the current Black Power 2nd edition has been around for twice as long as that. So what are the arguments for another edition? Well, one of them is if the rules are fundamentally broken or an aspect of them is. So for argument's sake, if we look back at 8th edition Warhammer, a lot of people really didn't like the magic system. So in order to change the magic system, you're going to need a bit more than an FAQ on that. You're going to need to rewrite the whole magic, the, the way magic works in the game. You're looking at a new edition in that case. So that's one example. I quite liked the 8th edition magic system. I think it stopped Death Star units, but I mean, that's just me. So that's one of the big uh, reasons why someone would want a new edition is that there are fundamental rules or large parts of the rules that they feel aren't working as intended or perhaps just aren't working at all. Now, do we have that in Black Powder? I don't think we do. I don't think there's any major problem with Black Powder at the moment, except I would move artillery fire 
to a separate phase. And I've talked about this in a very, very old video on this channel. I would have artillery fire before movement. Now, this is a change that you can make yourself. But for me, it would allow you the chance to disorder those units before your cavalry declare charges, stopping them forming square, etc, etc. So for me, artillery fire should be before movement. That's quite a fundamental change. That would probably require an addition change. But am I going to say I want the whole root and branch change just to move that? Not really. In in I'm going to sort of lay my cards on the table now. I don't really think it needs a new addition. I think it needs something else, and we'll get to that in a bit. But there are arguments for a new edition, and one of them would be for me. If someone said to me, Tim, you know, gun to your head, you have to argue that Black Power needs a new edition. Well, one of the reasons I would move, separate artillery fire out, move it to the start of the turn. A second thing would be to clear up some of the rules. Now, having read interactions with Rick Priestley on Facebook, it appears that he purposefully put the rather vague wording in there. Now, that for me doesn't necessarily float my boat, but I can't really criticise him for it because it's not a mistake, he's done it deliberately. That's a design choice. Now, I either like that design choice or I don't. And if I don't like it, if I dislike it enough, then I need to look for another set of rules. So I can't really complain at that. That's Rick Priestley's idea. So fair enough. He wants that rather ambiguous uh, way of measuring. So for argument's sake, you don't measure the wheels of your units. I always do. But you don't necessarily have to. So that means that, you know, if you're moving a unit, say, 12 inches, for me, I would move the outside model 12 inches. But realistically, you can shuffle around in that front arc and you'll end up with figures that have gone 16, 18, or maybe even 20 inches. But this is very much part of his, um, you know, gentlemanly agreement aspect of the game, that, you know, you don't do that time and again you don't take the piss basically and again that's fair enough he said at the war at the warlord games open day you know oh, i'd like to see someone run a tournament using these rules in a joking way because the rules are not designed for tournaments and you know that's absolutely fine as i said you know as some of you will know i'm putting on an event but i'm at, at, um, very keen to say it's not a tournament because it does rely on the gentlemanly agreement between players it doesn't have the same cutthroatness that many tournaments can have it i have to have them but many tournaments do have them so for me tightening up the wording on movement uh, particularly into penetration now i will be doing a video on that maybe not next week probably the week after that is on units moving through other units it's something that came up a lot in our last battle report and i want to explore that in a future video but i think next week we're probably going to be doing a start collecting video but anyway that's a, a topic for next time. So, uh, other than a little bit of ambiguity around about the moving and changing the artillery fire phase, I think Black Powder's in a pretty, pretty good place, if I'm honest. One of the big problems I've got with it is skirmishes. They operate very weird, and they've, I don't think they were particularly good in the first edition either. So, I think there's a little bit of, of mo potential movement there, but by and large... I don't think it needs a new edition. What I do think it needs, though, and I'm going to keep on banging this drum, are new supplements. Now, the supplements that we've had so far have added extra rules to the game or even changed existing rules. Here is another argument for a third edition, is if I'm playing Black Powder with the Clash of Eagles and you're playing Black Powder without the Clash of Eagles, we're playing two quite different games. Things like um, something simple like I'm going to declare a charge on your infantry with my cavalry. In my rule book, you need to do a command check, which is probably, if you're command seven, it's probably about a 60% chance of succeeding. If you are using your rule book, you need to roll anything but a double one or a double six. That is a uh, two in 17, sorry, a one in 17 chance of failing, a one in 18 chance. So that's what? about five percent chance of failing a little bit more than that six or seven so a 93 percent chance of forming square now 93 percent and uh 60 percent are very different numbers so i can you know if i'm calculating the risk of my cavalry going to try and charge your infantry i'm doing it on a 40 percent success rate you're doing it on a 94 percent success rate so there are the small things like that make big differences in 
the uh, the actual on the tabletop. That was on the mic maths there, so <laughs> apologies if it's wrong. I, if you tell want to tell me it's wrong, I wouldn't be surprised. So that's absolutely fine. What I'm saying there is a third edition could consolidate some of those rules. Now I haven't got the rule book yet, but I am told that a lot of these rules are incorporated in the epic Waterloo rule book. So if that's the case. Then I guess we can look at maybe a Black Powder 2.5, or we could also look at it as a Black Powder Napoleonic rulebook. Now that, I think, is not such a terrible idea, if I'm honest. If you had a separate one for Napoleonics to America's Civil War or you know, the Seven Years' War, the main periods played colonial, the main periods played, and then, you know, or just a general rulebook altogether without those specifics in there. A square in the uh, the Mardist Revolt is very, very different from a square in Waterloo or, uh, I don't know, uh, Catra something like that. And the rules currently do a decent uh, differentiation job of that, but it probably could be clear in its own specific rulebook. So that is something that I would uh, promote, would be a 2.5 or a Napoleonic edition. As I say, as far as I'm aware... That is the rule book in the Waterloo box set already gives you that. If you've got that, if you know better than me, then please let me know in the comments. Because I, un my understanding is that is the case, but I'm not 100%. Speaking of the supplements, oh yes, it's time for me to start banging that drum again. Yes, this is what we need more of. The actual core rules themselves, I think, are okay. I don't think there's anything wrong with them. I don't think there's any glaring errors that need fixing. What we need is more supplements. We need more rules for the specific periods, and we need different ways to play the game. The Prussians of 1806, they are not the Prussians of 1815. There are currently no rules for any of those mid-1800s armies. Nothing for Austerlitz, nothing for Jena or Austat or uh, Wagram, nothing for any of this kind. I mean, that's late, guess. Friedland. Nothing for any of these major, major clashes. Now, I'm not saying that, yeah, yeah, we need a whole supplement on the Tyrrell Revolt. Because, you know, they're, they're not going to sell that many of them. That's absolutely fine. But seriously, the Austerlitz campaign, if you folded in, uh, if you did uh, 1805 to 1808, so if you uh, started off with the Austerlitz campaign, finish it at the Battle of Tilsit, you would cover all of those mid-1800 armies, the Treaty of Tilsit, uh, not the Battle, the Treaty of Tilsit, then you would cover all of those armies. That would be a fantastic supplement on itself. This is what they sh could be working on instead of working on another Bolt Action Edition. Now, don't get me wrong, I am fully aware of the commercial pressures on these things. Bolt Action, I have absolutely no doubt in my mind, I've got no evidence for this, but there is no doubt in my mind that Bolt Action sells more than Black Powder does. I think we can probably all either imagine that or you know we can we some people will know i'm sure but bolt action yep yeah, i get it it sells more than napoleonics however we get back to the uh, if we're going to want to go back to um games workshop uh towards the the, the dog days of eighth edition of warhammer um, there were a lot of people there saying that, oh yeah, Warhammer doesn't sell very well, so that's why it's not supported. You end up with a chicken and egg situation here. Warhammer 8th Edition wasn't supported by Games Workshop, let alone the fans. So if it's not being pushed, then it's not going to be supported. The thing that they're pushing is going to be supported. So if they're pushing Bolt Action more than they're pushing Black Powder, then more people are going to pick up Bolt Action than Black Powder. And this then snowballs. The problem is with Bol uh, Black Powder, sorry, we've not had a supplement for a long old time. Let's let's say, for instance, I mean, if, if we just dial back a little bit, we've just had a major release from Warlord Games of their American Civil War range. They previewed them at their open day, and they came out, well, they came out a couple of months ago. Now, this is the thing is with them, how much have you seen them pushed? They're absolutely fantastic models. They're really, really nice. It's a really nice range. Okay, it's not the full range yet. They haven't got cavalry. They've only got sort of line infantry firing and marching and stuff like that. That's absolutely fine, though. They look great. They've, uh, you know, it, it's a whole line that they're going to be doing. Presumably, they're going to be doing things like um, 
the Iron Brigade or the uh, you know characters like Stonewall Jackson and people like this. They do the rules already. They do the Glory Hallelujah book. But how much advertising have you seen about that? I, I have seen next to none. In fact, I've probably seen more about the announcement for third edition Bolt Action than I have about the range that they've already released for the American Civil War. This, I, I just can't get my head around. They've spent quite a lot of money, clearly, on this range, and I'm sure they want it to succeed, but uh, they've not really pushed it. I mean, I went to Salute last week. If it were me, if I were, uh, you know, maybe even uh, Paul Sawyer rather than the uh, the MD, wh where was the display games for the American Civil War? Instead, they were pushing their next thing, which is epic scale uh, Punic War. Fantastic. I mean, nothing wrong with that. That's great. But where were the people showing off all the new American Civil War models? They were in the cabinets. So great. But where were people running through the games of Black Powder, the Glory Hallelujah supplement? Where were the, the bundles and all this kind of stuff that you do to market a new range? None of that was there at all. And while I think a new edition is a fantastic way of getting new people into that hobby or that genre of games, unless you're going to promote it, you're wasting your time. So I don't think... I, I Part of me thinks, oh, it would be good to get a Black Powder new edition because then there'd be a bounce of people playing it. I, I honestly don't think there would be. I don't think that Warlord would promote it that successfully, meaning that that's the problem too. Now, I wanted to get on to the second part of this video here. Uh, I wanted this one to be about 20 minutes, so I think we're going to be slightly longer than I wanted to run, but that's, that's okay. Uh, the second part I wanted to talk about is the the audience and the, the people who consume the products of these companies. Now, I am a big fan of a channel called Arbiter Ian. He does a lot of Warhammer 40,000 and 30,000 uh, law videos. So he does do some wargaming ones as well. But I was listening to his recent video about the uh, the revelation of female custodes. Now, one of the good things that we've got in the Napoleonic and historical sphere in, ge in general is that no one person owns the intellectual property for that. So suddenly we can't turn around and say, oh, well, yeah, Napoleon's Imperial Guard was made up entirely of women because we know it wasn't. Now, that said, if you were to make a battalion of Imperial Guard that were all women, I say all power to your elbow. It doesn't really bother me. But we know in the history that they weren't all women. So fair enough. You know, you can do, well, this is my unit of them and it's a bit of fun or you can do the historical version of them. I, I, you know, I've got absolutely no problem with that. But something that he kept saying, he said it twice in the video, actually, and I commented on the video, but uh, there were no replies to it, which is fair enough, you know, he's a busy guy, is that he kept mentioning about fans being entitled. This comes back to Warlord. Are we... I, I, is me calling for another um supplement is that me being entitled am i a spoiled brat to spitting out my dummy because warlord games aren't doing what i want them to do and i hate and i and i mean i hate when people particularly youtubers complain about fans having a sense of entitlement now it's interesting because they always say it as a negative however Entitlement has a number of different meanings. So the one that they always go for is, if I just look up the Google meaning of entitlement, the one they are saying is uh, the belief that one has, so this is a quote, quote, the belief that one has, that one is inherently deserving of privileges or special treatment. That's the one that they're using entitlement for and they're using it as a negative. However, it also has another definition which is, quote, the amount to which a person has a right, end quote. Now, do we have a right as consumers to demand stuff of Warlord Games? Or any company, for that matter. And I would say, yes. Yes, we absolutely do. This is not a sense of entitlement. This is a sense of they only exist because we allow them to exist. We as customers give them the money that allows them to exist. They, we, we don't owe them, they owe us. This is the case with Games Workshop, and I, I really, really wish that more Games Workshop fans felt this way, because the way Games Workshop treats their fan base is absolutely disgusting. 
I mean, it, it honestly, I, I can't... The release of this, The Old World, has brought it home to me more clearly than it ever has. And I've always been, you know, reasonably clear-eyed on this. But it's just... Uh, just blows my absolute mind that people can still really support Games Workshop in any way. Now, I support them financially when, for instance, I've just bought the Custodes box. Well, that's because I felt that was good value. But how people support them in just a... a, 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 a it absolutely blows my mind. I think it's serious Stockholm Syndrome. So who am I to demand things of Warlord Games? Well, realistically, no one. The thing is, I have a right to demand another supplement from them and they have the right to ignore me and that's <laughs> that's absolutely fine but i'm not asking them to bring out a supplement for free i'm asking them to bring out a supplement that i can pay for and give them money towards they could bring out a range of figures that would go with them for argument's sake they could bring out 1806 prussians and i might i might grab the army if they did it in plastic but we as the fans we are deserving of a company's if not if not loyalty to us, we are at least deserving of them paying attention to us, shall we say. So this is why I have absolutely no problem with calling out um, Warlord Games on their very poor handling of Black Powder at the moment. The fact that we've not had a supplement in oh, years. In fact, in fact let, let me look up when the last time we had a supplement was. Well, I can see a YouTube video that did a flip through in 2017. So that was seven years ago. That was the last time we had a Napoleonic supplement for Bat Powder. Again, we've had a we've had a new edition since the last supplement came out. So there's been no Seven Years of War one. There's been no Napoleonic one. Um, I don't think there's been a Colonial one. I can't think of Franco-Prussian War, Crimean War, none of this kind of stuff. So it really is beyond time that we had a new supplement for this. And I'm going to keep banging this drum. I'm going to keep going on about it because I want Napoleonics to do well. And I want Warlord to promote it. And they are currently not. I'm, I'm really sorry to say they are the custodians of Black Powder and they're doing a very, very poor job of looking after it. So while I don't think we need another edition, what I do think is we need some clarity on existing rules, particularly where they've changed in the supplements. And I think we need some more supplements. That's my opinion on it. What do you guys think? This is genuinely one where I'm really, really interested to see what the community at large thinks. Let's have a good discussion in the comments. If you're quite happy playing the games that you're playing, then that's absolutely great. If you think we need more supplements, then that's great as well. I know, um, you know I'm kind of preaching to the choir here. But if you think we need a whole new edition, let me know about that as well. Thank you very much for joining me today, and I shall see you guys next time.